Thank you so much for confirmation. Let me share my screen. As we did cover a lot of stuff in Oops concept. So um, till to the point that we reached, do we have any question guys? Any point which is a little bit confusing for you? Anything, any other questions? No question? Okay. Good. Let's see what happened with the Microsoft whiteboard. Oh, it's open already. Let's take a new board. Okay. Today, we're going to start with our new concept, which we can name it as an encapsulation. Encapsulation means what wrapping data in a what in a part or wrapping data in something so that we can deliver and we can pass it file to file, package to package, or even uh, project to project. We can do that. Okay. So today agenda, we will be studying encapsulation. Encapsulation. One minute. Encapsulation. Encapsulation means a wrapping data and something so that we can add one security layer to it. <clears throat> this is called encapsulation. Now inside encapsulation, we have to what? We have to study what? We have to study access modifiers in encapsulation. Now, what are these access modifiers? You will see one by one. First access modifier that we have is what? Public. Let's see. Access modifiers. First access modifier is what? Our first access modifier is public. Second, we will study default access modifier. Third, we have protected access modifier. And fourth, we have what? We have private access modifier. Each of them has their different use case and different access layers. Like for private, we have different rules. For protected, we have different rules. For default, we have different rules. And for public, we have different rules. With each of these keywords, we can add a layer of accessibility, a layer of security to our code class and methods. Now, let's explain each of them. First of all, we will go with the private one. What is private access modifier? Private access specifier. This access specifier, or we can say level of this access specifier is only within the class. It can be not accessed from outside the class, means that level of 
let's have a definition level of there no it's not a level of their access can only be within the same class. What does it mean? For example, I'm creating class. If I create class, means class A. Inside that, you have one method private, like private, I can say message. Inside the body of message, you have something. This message body is only accessible in this class itself. Even you cannot access it outside that class, even if it's in same file. So this is the access level of what? Private access Private file. Access. Now, we will see each of them one by one in example, but let's cover all of the definition at once. Next, we're going to see what we will see the default access modifier or access specifier, we can say default. The access level of this default access modifier is only within the package. Means you're creating the package. If you don't give anything, it will be by default. They're accessible within the package. It cannot be accessed from outside the package. If you do not specify any access level, it will be default. This is the rules. Now let's write it down. Access level. This level is. Level is only within the package itself. So when is I guess and Now, the example of this is only you can create a package and inside package, you can access their files, their folders. Uh, if you create classes, you can access anything, but within the package, it must be within the package. This was for default access modifier or specifier. Let's have a definition of what. Now, next, we will see the protected. Protected access modifier. The access level of this protected access modifier is only within the package and outside the package through a child class. What does it mean? This is behave same like default access modifier, but there is one slightly changes. If we want to access the data, which is uh, attached with, which is tied with the protected. So we must create inheritance of, as a relationship with the other package or class so that whenever we are, want to access something, so we need to do that outside the package. This is called protected access modifier. So this can be done whenever we, this we will see at the coding section once we write the code for the protected. Now let's write down the Definition access level of this modifier is only within the package 
and outside the package the package but with one condition but with one condition that it should establish what establish what inheritance with the inheritance we can access the protected or we can uh, access the data which is belongs to protected access what protected access modifier now this was about the protected access modifier let's go and see the last one which is public access modifier now from its name it is abused that we can access this from anywhere the access level of a public access modifier is everywhere you can access it from within the class outside the class within the package outside the package if you create if you add a public keyword to any method to any class to anything you can access it anywhere even outside the package as well this is the power of public access level this level is every where this can be accessed from anywhere these are all the four access modifiers that we have in encapsulation with the help of these access modifiers you can uh, you can create your project you can access the files and you can add layers of security inside your code this is the beauty of the access modifiers now let's do one thing let's go to my pro code and let's start with the private access modifier i'll close all of these files I will do one thing. Let me create this. I see this. Let me erase this method. Simple. Okay. Error gone. I will do one thing, guys. For for uh, for that, let's create a new packages so that we can understand at least the concept. For that, I will right click on SRC. I will go with <clears throat> new one. I will click on package and I will create a package like uh, private protected like let's say practice package click on finish now my package is created so i will right click on that let's do the program let's go to it i will create a class i will name the class like we can say class can be only like i will name it private class click on public static void main once the file is created so now let me create what let me create a class here i will name it like uh, let's suppose name the class uh, xyz i will name it xyz now and here i will have what i will have one me put void mm, let's say it msg message 
let's take the scenario first of all system dot out dot print ln print ln i will print something right here um private access level now for it as of now i will do what i will create the object of xyz xyz equal to read read new xyz there i x created what the object of xyz class now with the read object dot what dot msg i can access their data now let me run it first of all if you see on the screen it is displayed private access level but if right in there i put what i put private if i save it here you are you can see you got an error let it say the method message from the type xyz is not visible you can see this is the power of private that even their private will not let this void message to access it with the same file even within the same file inside the public static void main this is called compile time error guys if i run this if i say proceed you can see that exception in trait main java.lang.error unsolved and resolved compilation problem the message from the type xyz is not visible visible means there we add a private label to it so we hide their visibility this is called say one layer security that we add to our function suppose for example you're creating a banking function so that one of the function is very restricted the user account and password of the uh, users or clients so for that we need to store their data inside with the private labels so for their password and email or user account we need to add what private label so that it should not be hackable and even their class even cannot access them this is called the power of private. This was the example. How we can access this, we will see in the code. As of now, just first of all, I will give you three minutes. Go ahead, type this code. And inside this code, I will create some little bit changes so that you can understand what I'm supposed to do. Go ahead, first of all, write this. I'll pause the recording for a minute. Just guys, keep in mind that mostly we will add this private private access modifiers with the variables means we gonna wrap our variables with this like let's let play create a scenario for example i will comment this section let's erase this section as well um you guys also do the comment just Try to comment the private void message section, all of the code. Now I will do one thing. I will create, let's make it private and password equal to what? Equal to one, two, three, four, five. I will add a semicolon. I will add one another thing. Private PRI private. Oh, I made the P capital. 
private like string name equal to Ali at the rate gmail dot com. Let's make it username. Username. This is my variable data that I cannot access them directly. Now, what I will do, I will do one thing. I will create one method void DISP display. And now inside that, I will do what? I will access those data and I will display those data. Because I can now, I cannot directly access what? I cannot directly access my variables. Like I will say, username plus I will do one thing, username. Next, I will copy this, control C, control V. Instead, I will put what um, password. Now, just try to change it here also. Password. Now, here is the point. Let me create the object is created. Let's access this as well. Rate dot disp. Now, if I run this, this will not create any error, compilation error for me. The username is ali ali at the rate gmail dot com, and the password is one two three four five. So, where is the concept of this encapsulation? We only wrap the data of directly variables inside our private access modifier, and if anyone wants if the user wants to display it for their self so we can put that inside the function look we add one layer of security it means if someone wants to access directly our username and password just assume the scenario like this if someone wants to access this username directly plus they will add rate dot if i access this password see i cannot access it there is no password for me they will not allow me the access specifier of the class private label if i add private label to the password variable so it is not giving me an hint so that i can access it if i remove that private from here i remove that now if i you can see that read dot i can access the password as of now you can see it is giving me the hint that you can access the password but whenever I put the private label again right here, and I will say if the program, if I come again, read dot, you can see that there is no option of what P for me. There's only I can access the display method itself. So this is called the once extra level of security that we add to our code so that nobody can access directly the variables which they are storing the data inside the memory. So most of the time, hackers do what? Hackers access these data. Hackers do not go for functions because function names were a little bit different, were a little bit means very tough and they assign very tough names inside the Java coding for the function so that nobody can guess it. But users or hackers can access these things if we don't add private level to the system. So that's why all of the time Java suggests that whenever you're creating variables inside the class and you want to access those data, so put it in private label and just access it inside that function within the class and you can access that method or functions outside the class of itself inside the file. This was all about what? This was all about guys encapsulation of a private label. Hope it is clear. So go ahead, type this program also. But it is within the file, okay? Just go ahead, copy that uh, method, private void message, and under that, type this code again. I'll give you three minutes for that, and I'll pause the recording.
Now, guys, we are done with the private level or access modifier. Now let's go study the default access modifier, how we can create programs with default access modifiers. I will do one thing. Let's take the scenario and create one file. I will do one thing. I'll create one file. I will name it class. Class, like suppose we can say it like this class. A. Let's make it public static void as well. I'll click on finish. Let's create one another program. I'll create two files, guys. I'll create one another file also. And I will name this class B. Check mark the public static void main also for them. Now you can see that I have class A and I have class B. Now, what is the role of default access modifier right in here in this class? So for example, in class A, I will create what? I will create class time itself. I'll create the name of class of time. And inside that class, I will do what? Void, I will add time. This is my method, which is inside my class A, and it is name of the method is time itself. So inside that system dot out dot parental m add a semicolon. Inside that, print the data that uh, it, it will be six fifteen p.m. CA California time zone. CA time zone. Let's create the scenario like this. I have one class of time, and it is by default taking the update time every each second which the time is passing. So it's updating yourself. Yeah. Now, first of all, I can access my this time method inside my class itself. Time read equal to new time. Now, first of all, with the help of read dot time itself. Sorry, I need to remove this. Read dot time itself. I can access my this method within their class. If I run this, I would say, okay, just see the scenario, guys. The data is printing that 6.15 PM California time zone. If I don't add anything with this, my method with my class or with my variables, like suppose, for example, I'm creating the variables here and, and suppose pass equal to this. This is by default called default access modifier that we didn't add any label. We didn't add any access level of security. So this is called access default access modifier. Now I can access the next rule of the access modifier is that you can access the same method which you do not add within the same package inside one another file. Now you can see that my class B is and my class A is different file, my class B is different file, but both of them, class A and class B is inside my practice package. So now I can access the data of what? The data of class B without any hesitation. Let's create, let's do one thing. Let's create time, I would say show equal to new, time, let's put a semicolon. You can see that I don't have any class of time, guys. Here you can see that, do I have any thing by the name of the class of time inside my class, file of class B? 
I don't have anything, but still I can access the class of time which is located in my class A, which is located in another file. The file name is class A. You can see that time class is located in file of class A, but I can access the time in, right in my file of class B. So now with the help of that show dot what, I can access the time right in here. If I run the method, you can see that it's again printing for me 6.15 p.m. California time zone. You can see that I don't have what? I don't have any class time right in my class B. Do I have anything? No, but still I can access it. Why I can access this method? Because inside my class A, I didn't add anything, first of all. It is by default, at default access modifier. And nextly, the rule says that if something class method or any variable is uh, by default access modifier, or we assign default access modifier to it. So it will be accessible between the files only within the package. Now this class of time I can access in how many files I can, if I create it, I can access in all of them. Like suppose I can access it even in private class also. I can access it in class A. If I create one class inside my, class B, so I can access that class again inside my class A. This is the power and beauty of a default access modifier that even you don't need to be worried about this. This is now the concept of a real development. The developer does what? Um, someone create the class of time and they are both in same package. So they will do what? They will do uh, if another program is if another developer is creating class B, so uh, he will do it. Instead, he will not go and create from the beginning from the scratch the class of time. He will access the method which is located in the class A class of time, like I did. You can see that it saves my time. The code is reused, so I don't need to go and create, recreate from the scratch the class a time. And again, I add a method of time for that. So I directly use the, ob I create the object of class time and I use the method. Is that understood, guys? Yes, sir. Yes. Now go ahead, first of all, do one, this. Let me close this. First of all, try to do it. This is my first file. First file. Try to write first this one. And secondly, once you're done, this is your second file. Second file. Go ahead and type the code. I'll give you five minutes for that. How do you bring the other both files together, sir? Sorry? How do you bring both files next to each other? Okay, just take from here and drag it a little bit. It will be split it into screen. Was, was this your question, Inayat? Yes, got okay. it. Uh, okay, you're in the seat. Okay, okay. Sir, what is the, the, uh, the benefit of class B that we created? The benefit of class B is suppose you, the uh, class B is created by one another developer and this class B is used for different purpose, other different purpose. But class B also need a time method also. So for accessing the time method, the class B person don't need to create the time class again and create the method. They can access directly the method of this class time itself. So let's say I will create in class B, class like suppose info, I will name it info, and I will do what? Void uh, and DISP. I'll do DISP. Suppose this is used for another purpose. I will print out what? System dot out dot parental and M4 display. 
suppose think of this like you could code a lots of thing in this function now you can do what now you also created the time object of time class which is located in another file and you access its method time now you can create object of info now do your task info read equal to new info add semicolon now i'll do what read dot what dsp now if i run my class b see the output first of all it's printing the california time and secondly display the info display means it can also also access the data from other file it can fetch the method of other files and also it can fetch their method also now you understand like inheritance the class a is, re is reusable for the class b yeah like inheritance it is reusable because we save or we optimize the code we didn't go and create everything from the scratch we reuse the concept thank you sir yeah. i'll pause the recording the question was from abdul that uh, how can we access too many different functions inside one other class so i created and two more functions inside my class time guys one is cobble second is virginia now on the left hand side of my screen just i created the object of show and with the help of show dot i can access each of their methods without any hesitation okay guys uh, i assume that you you are all done with the typing of the code so this was all about the Default access modifier till now we study private default. Now our next target is to study and start with what? To start with the protected access specifier. Now we we explain that protected access specifiers only can be applied on data member, which we can say to variable of the class method and constructor it can't be applied on the class it means that we cannot we we cannot add the protected access specifier on the class we can only add with the method with the variables and with the constructor this is all about the uh, protected access modifier and the access level of the access modifier is only within the package it is first rule is that it would say the access level is within the package. And if someone wants to access outside of the package, the method outside of the package, so they must create a, a relationship of inheritance so that it will be, the connection will be established. Now, let me close these files. Let me save this. Let me close also this file. First of all, I have one package name which is called practice package. Let's create one another package also with that. I would say I will create one another package. I will name it protected. I'll click on finish. So you can see that I have one protected package. I have one practice package. First of all, inside my practice package, or let's create one another more package. Let's say, I will click, I create one protected package. I will go and I will create one another. And uh, protected two, just name it protected two, or name it like this, two. You can see that I have two packages, different packages. First is protected. Let's rename this if it is possible for us. Refactor, rename. I will make it protected one and protected two. Continue. Now we will implement the protected access specifier on these classes. Let's first say, first of all, I will create one fly, a file inside my protected one package. I will create first class, first class. I would say public static void main. 
I will do what I will do. I will create one class right here and I will name it addition. Addition. Now inside that, you do what? You have what you have to add two variables. Like for example, we would say, I will create int a equal to 12, add semicolon, int b equal to 12, add semicolon, and result equal to a plus b, add semicolon. Now you have one, you have one function DISP display. Let's display this. Now inside that, I will do what? I will display the result system dot out dot print align. Result of two digit is. Let's add this okay. result. Now, first rule of protected says what? Let me make this protected. Now I create, I make this method, this DISP method as a what? As a protected. Now, first rule of protected says that you can access protected within the package. Within the file, let's create this file, addition. I'll create the object as a read equal to new addition at semicolon now of read dot disp I have. Now first rule says it can be displayed within the package within the file. Within the file first rule is applied that result is of two digit is 24. Let's create one another file inside the same package, protected one. I will create one another file. I will name it class. Uh, first, we name it first class, now name it second class. Second class. And inside second class, we need also what? We need the same methods that we need to add. Because the class A class first class is developed by Abdul, assume like this, and second class is developing by me. Now I need what I need addition class, addition method, addition class. So what should I do? I need to do what I need to change my behavior, change my return type. Like suppose let's say let's change this to add. Let me change this also to add so that we don't feel any difference. Now, in the, my class, I need also addition program because I need to implement the addition software. So for that, I don't need to recreate it again. Don't reinvent the wheel, guys. If something is already there, so you can you make use of this. With that, because it's within the package, you can see that both of the file, first file, first class and second class, both in the same package. So first rule, second rule says that you can access it. First rule says that you can access it within the same file or within the package. Now I will create what? I will create the addition package. Let's create a read equal to new. You can see that it don't create any error for me. Read dot add i would say add if you see that do i have guys any class with the name of addition right here in my second class file no i don't have but I still i can access the class of addition which is in different file but we have this within the same package so i can access it first rule is apply you can see that even i can run it in different file my first rule is what applied now let's go for the second rule that what will happen for the second rule whether it will be implementable right in here or not now in my other file protected to and protected to package i will create one another file 
Suppose Protect F1 package is developed by Sonia Ahmad and CR, and Protect 2 package is developing by Marina, uh, like um, Marina Abdul and uh, sorry, Marina Masood and uh, Ahmad Samadi. So now Protect it inside Protect 2. Let's create uh, my program. Let's say, let's say, um, addition. Let's say class access class six. Let me say, let me name let the name access class. Let's add make it public static wide. Now you can see, guys, first class, second class is belongs to protected two package and uh, sorry, belongs to protected one package and access classes inside your protected two package. Now inside this class, I need one. I need what, guys? I need to access the. I need to access this method, this addition method, this add method. How can I access outside of the class? Outside of the even outside of the what? Outside of the package itself. My the target function or the target me to this located inside my first class which is inside your protected one package now you need to access this method inside your another package protected to and your file is access class so how would you do that let's see the scenario i will do one first of all i told you that we need to create the is a relationship class access class let's make it extend extends what extends my which class any idea first class no why first class you have addition your methods is inside your addition it's not inside your first class so you need to extend addition now it gives you error why when you hover on that addition cannot be resolved to a type. Why? Because we need to use one another keyword import because we need to import that package. Import which package? Let's copy protected one, control C inside that. Once you import the protected for dot star semicolon, you're good to go. Now let's see change the addition to public yeah now here is one another point that we need to do with that okay let's make this class public okay see the error gone from here let's make this let's do it in, in this way wait a second Let's do it in this way. I will create one another file and protect it one plus addition. Just don't put public static void main to it. You didn't put any public static void main to it. Just copy this data. Control C. Where is the class? Because it is inside protected one. So copy and paste the data right in here. So just try to do what? Now consider this. You have a class addition inside your protected one package and you have a class what? Access class which is inside that. Now let me copy this. Copy the name of the class. Let's change this. Now you can see that the error guns. Why? Because someone else stand and create class of addition. Suppose, for example, I'm your team leader. I created class of addition and I call over on all of you that, hey, if anyone inside the project of Java basic need addition class. So this is my address that inside protected one package, I add a class of addition. Anyone, if someone want to use that, just do one thing. First of all, go ahead and try to use the syntax. Import name of the package, put a dot and star after that semicolon. 
This is the first rule. Second rule that within the class, after that, you need to create the inheritance, means you need to use an extends keyword and add the name of the class, which the method is exist inside that. Now, after that, inside your main method, you can create the object of that class. I will do one thing, wait equal to new. See that I didn't face any error. Look, my class addition is in different file, in different class. I in different package even because it's inside the protected one package. I can create the object of that class addition method or class inside my another package, which is inside my protected two package. Now I will do what? Rate dot add. Sorry, let me see the method name. <laughs> I will put semicolon. Let's see what is the error. Multiple mark has it to do auto generate method sub the method add from type class is not visible. Why it's not visible? Because we had it protected. No, it should be not like this. Mm -hmm. mm. Let's say protected now for accessing this, we need to do what? There is a one slightly changes that it is tied with what guys it is tied with the public access modifiers that we need to study that as well after that we will understand that also the class is public that's okay totally so it's we can access this method wide message no worries at all we import that we create the object of what we create the object of the wrong class why we are creating the object of class addition? Here is a mistake that we add. We need to do what? For that, we need to create the class of access class. I was waiting for you guys, but nobody didn't hint me. So for that access class, read new. Now you do what? Read dot, look, add is visible. Did you feel the difference that I'm creating? I'm creating what? I create one file, which is no, its name is class addition. And I extend that class addition and tied with the access class. Now with the help of access class object, I can access this method of add. Now, if I run this, you can see that it's still displaying result of two digit is 24 for me. Even I don't have any kind of function or variables inside my protected two package. Now you got it. It was confused. Yes, sir, we got it. But one more question. Mm -hmm. Sir, there was a mixture of public class and private class. Mm -hmm. So when there is a mixture of the uh, private and public, uh, can we still uh, import the, the file or yeah. the package? In here, we didn't mix, uh, uh, Ahmad, we didn't mix any private something. We just, miss, we, we need to add a public. Later after the protected, we will study. Public from its name, it's obvious that we need, it is accessible all over the files and packages. So by default, we say if we don't add anything to it, it is by default what? It is by default a default access specifier, which the default access specifier rule says that it is only accessible within the package. Now we want to access this class outside the package because this class addition is inside my protected one and access class is inside my protected two. So if I need to access this class addition, so I need to add a public access specifier to it. Okay, so we got it. Now let me split the screen for you. Okay, let's say, let's go first of all, write this. Sir, what is the function of protected here? The function of protected is here that it gives you the restriction level. First of all, restriction level is that uh, you can access it like default in your 
same pair within the same package, no worries. But it is function start from here. But if you create one file, which is name, name is addition, and you create one another file, which is existed, which exists in another file, like I created, which exists in the different package. So this is called the level of access with the protected. You can see that my class addition method add is protected and it is in which me package it is in protected one package and i have class access class which is located in protected two package right in here if you can spot my left hand side of the screen it is in protected two package now with the help of import keyword i access the data and i use the extends keyword which we create the relationship of inheritance and we create the object of that and we add you can see that we add one extra layer of security. The class is access class, and we are accessing the method of which is located in another class. We hide the data step by step. We encapsulate it right in here. Now you understood, Abdul? A little, sir. Not more, yes. but I have, I have to rewatch the video again. Yeah, you need to rewatch it. Wait a second, I will split the screen for you guys. Just go ahead. First of all, do what? First of all, go ahead and create what? Create two different file, two different packages in your computer Eclipse. Once you created two different packages, first of all, go inside package one, which is your first package. First program. First of all, go ahead, type this but create that without public static void main. Secondly, go for this second program. And now create a, a class file name, which is access file with the public static void main check mark. And I try to access the class of addition inside that. Go ahead. Once you do that by yourself, you will understand it a little bit. I'll pause the recording for a minute. I will give you five minutes and I will re-explain it again. Don't worry about that. Okay, guys, as we study today, private access modifier, default access modifier, and protected access modifier. We are left with the public. Public is very easy. Tomorrow, once we start the class again, we will cover up the protected again. We will practice some basic example. After that, we'll go with the public. And if the time permit us, we will start with the arrays. If time not permit us, if time not permit us, so we will do it. We will, we will stop there and we'll start with the arrays with next session. So tomorrow, I'm, tomorrow we will be st studying again this protected and public. I will explain it in pictorial diagram. So we're winding up class here. Let me stop the recording.